Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. In this video, I'm going to install the new uh, brake that Technic sent me for my Z-axis. Um, the Z-axis ha currently has a nitrogen charge spring that's too weak, and we size that motor to work that Z-axis without that gas charge spring. Well, come to find out that gas charge spring is also helping hold that Z-axis up so that it doesn't come down, as you can see here, when the machine is powered down. So let's take a look at this brake. It's also referred to it as an electronic spring. Um, so here it is. It's got some mounting screws. And here is our brake. It's got a couple of leads. This takes 24 volts of DC to unlock it by default. It's locked, obviously, when there's no power to the machine, you don't want the access coming down. Um, and then again, here's the, uh, the leads. You put 24 volts of DC to these leads, and it doesn't matter which one's which, it's not uh, polarity dependent. So you can put 24 volts on either one. And the way this particular unit works is kind of cool is that I'll remove the motor on the z-axis and then I will put this in its place. It's got the same shaft size. It's a half inch on the output and a half inch on the input. And if you look inside there, there's a collar and that collar will clamp the motor shaft to the uh, brake. And then there's a small hole here to access the uh, the clamping screw inside that brake. So installation is pretty straightforward. It does have a key. I don't need the key because my coupler is a clamping type coupler. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed on the Z-axis and I'm gonna go ahead and put some uh, insulated spade connectors on this. And uh, here's a shot of the uh, control cabinet and I'll be going from the 24 volt plus side of the uh, power supply, the little yellow terminal block. I'll go from the 24 volt plus side of that. I'm gonna go down to output eight common relay on the Acorn output board. And then on the normally open side, I'm gonna go up to one lead of this brake. And on the other lead, I'm gonna come down to the black uh, DIN rail terminal block which is common and terminate it. So Acorn can control this by closing that contact on output 8 and then we'll go over uh, programming it on the control here. And then we're, after we're done installing this we're going to go ahead and tune that z-axis and uh, we'll be using Technic's auto tuning feature in the MSP software. Alright so let me get this swapped out and wired in and I'll take you to the back of control cabinet go again go over again how I wired it and uh, then we'll set it up in the Centroid software. Okay, I've got the motor and the brake put together and also mounted to the machines, coupled to the ball screw. Um, here's the cable. It's coming around here and I labeled it Z-brake so it wasn't confused, but it's labeled Z-brake. And it's coming down here. Yellow is 24 volts, black is common. All right, so if you look here, those two yellow wires right here are coming and going to output eight. The center terminal yellow is going up and then it's going over in that upper wireway and then it's coming down to this terminal. This is 24 volts, this is common. And then the normally open contact is going up to the brake. So, so when that output relay eight closes, voltage will go in and come out. It goes through the yellow wire, up to the brake. Again, it's not polarity sensitive. And then common is coming down. And then it's going across in that upper wireway. 
and then it's landed right here on this black terminal. So it's pretty simple to wire. So now let's uh, go ahead and set up CNC 12 to command this axis brake. Okay guys, now that the brake is installed, you'll notice I removed the nitrogen cylinder here. So the, the brake and the Z-axis uh, clear path motor are gonna be controlling that Z-axis so we won't have any more falling. So we need to go ahead and go into CNC 12 wizard and set the output to control that brake. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, let's start CNC 12. F7 utility, F10 the wizard, output definitions, we want axis 3 brake release, left click hold, drag it over here to output 8, it's that simple, write the settings to CNC control configuration, write these changes, yes. Wants a power down, so I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go ahead and power down Acorn, restart it, wait for the heartbeat. It's back. So let's click OK. OK, emergency stop detected. So I need to reset my e-stop. OK, now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's test the z-axis. Okay, let's go ahead and home the machine. Just hit home. There was y. There's x. Okay, let's jog that z down. Now I'm going to hit the e-stop. Let's go into the diagnostic screen and you'll see, I'm going to move the cursor down to output 1, which is right here. You see it's turned off and output 1 is no fault out. So right now the brake is holding that Z axis. So let's go ahead and pull the emergency D stop. And now output 1 is closed and that brake should be released. Let's go ahead and jog the Z axis. There it goes. Okay, so that's all there is to installing that brake. Now we're going to go ahead and use the ClearPath software to tune that Z-axis. Uh, I'm going to cover a couple things. I was talking to Technic, uh, my applications engineer, and he had some points he wanted me to make sure I covered. Number one is avoid skinny belts. Belts should be wide to reduce vibrations, no guitar strings. In my case, I'm using those uh, couplers. So avoid skinny belts. Belts should, be re belts should be wide to reduce vibrations. They also should be strong enough to handle the torque from your motor if you're using belt reduction. Again, I'm going one to one. Avoid helical couplings. Use spider couplings wherever possible. Those helical couplings are the ones that look like a, a piece of aluminum round bar with a spiral around it that kind of flex. You don't want those. I, I talked about those earlier. You don't want that type. Um, use spider couplings whenever possible. Here's a picture of one. Use one of these or use the type that I have on my machine. Have the machine firmly on the floor. Some people try to tune the machine while sitting on wheels and they get poor tuning. So your machine needs to be set, needs to be bolted down, and needs to be rigid. Have all axes fully loaded with the worst case load and the mechanics. If you have a 5 pound chuck and a 10 pound chuck, tune it with the 10 pound chuck, for example. So if you're doing a lathe, use your biggest chuck. Um, here we're using this, uh, we're tuning it with the Z axis, so it's having to carry the weight of the Z axis. If the machine has any sheet metal, make sure all the sheet metal is on the machine and in place. Uh, they can vibrate and the motor needs to see these vibrations to adjust the tuning properly. Add any accessories, tool changers, etc. that will be attached to the machine before you start tuning. 
basically what they're trying to the point they're trying to get across is make sure that machine is in its ready state it's got tables all the iron all the sheet metal everything attached in my case I've got everything attached to the machine if possible move the axis by hand prior to tuning and make sure there's no binding or screw sticking out in the line of travel in my case we've already kind of move these axes back and forth up and down I've already said all that in a previous video because I had all my my parameters and we used the uh, the the default tune that came with the clear path motors to do that it allowed me to move the axis uh, um, using that that particular tune the point here is you want to make sure you have no mechanical binding if you have a moving table add the worst case heavy load clamp the table clamp the load securely that's what should go on this table. Um, I don't have my little vise on it yet. I can put my vise in. I still have a fixture plate and a vise that I'll put on here. And then I'll figure out, I'll see if I can find the specs on the X4 and see what the table load is. And I'll try and weigh it down and then run those, run the X and Y. All we're going to do here today is just run the tune on the Z axis. Tune with the 100% torque in the auto tuner possible. You should have worked with Technic to determine the size of the motors for your machine. If you knew what the, the steppers were and you just replaced like with like, you should be okay. But when we get into the software, the ClearPass software, it's going to ask us the percentage of torque you want to use. What they're saying is we want to use 100% torque. We'll go over that. Use a strong enough power supply to allow the motors to make their moves. The IPC-5 is great. Switching power supply, not so much. Well, we're using the IPC5 on, on my machine. We said the second best would be a toroidal power supply. Um, uh, the, the worst would be a switching power supply because it can't absorb regenerative energy. You'd have to put some sort of capacitors on there. It's just not, it's not wise. I could see people using the IPC5 um, with Technic's help. They can tell you how many you're going to need based on the motors you're purchasing. And then once you know that, then if you want if you want to use their power supply, then do it. If you want to use a toroidal power supply, then make sure you find one with the same wattage as IPC5. I believe IPC-5 is 500 watt. So you want at least a 500, if not a 600 watt, toroidal power supply um, to use. The auto tuner uses square wave tuning to excite any machine vibrations that are present. The auto tuner will then try different combinations of gains to prevent excitation of the machine harmonics. The motions will be abrupt, square wave, but not high speed. Be prepared, it may get noisy, and it will. You'll hear all kinds of weird noises and vibrations, and it's, it's abrupt. You'll, you'll see when we do the tuning, it, it, the, 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 it's gonna seem jerky. So that's all normal. That's also why they want you to have this machine planted firmly on the ground where it belongs. For dual axis, like gantry, use the dual axis tuning procedure. Technic has a dual axis tuning procedure. I will upload that document into Centroid's Acorn knowledge base so it's there so for reference. So you'll look for that there. So if you have a gantry type router and you have dual axis, you'll find that, that document there. If after the tuning is complete, the motion is good, but the motor is a little noisy, buzzing, you can adjust the fine tuning slider in MSP under the setup tuning, fine tuning. We'll take a quick look at that when we're done doing the, the tune. Before you start the auto tuning process, move the motor to one end of the travel. When you get to the screen after set auto tune area, move the motor away from the home position until the bar turns green. Leave the motor there. You have just defined the stroke for tuning. The auto tuner will move from this location back towards the starting area, starting location during tuning. Okay, we'll go over, we'll go over that as we do the tuning. Um, okay, the rest of this we can talk about after we're done with the tuning. Okay, we're ready to tune that Z-axis motor. Now I've got the signal cable disconnected from that motor. I have the USB cable plugged into that motor. And one of the challenges that I have here is CNC12 is not going to command that motor. But I have to have power, main power up to that motor. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the diagnostic screen and I'm going to turn on output 1 and output 8 manually. Output 1 is a no fault output so I'm going to override CNC 12 and tell it to turn it on. That in turn will close the contactor and get power up to the motor. Output 8 if you'll recall 
is our brake. So that brake has to be energized so that the, the axis can move up and down. You'll see my axis is all the way down right now. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to release e-stop. Now let's go into the diagnostic screen by pressing Alt-I. And now we want to go over. You'll see output 1 is on right now. But as soon as we start monkeying around, we might get a drive fault and it'll open. So we want to override that by pressing Control alt f Now I'm going to move the, the box away. You'll see an underline underneath output 1. That means it's forced on. Now we're going to go to 8. You'll see right here it says Axis 3 Brake Release. So we're going to do the same thing, Control alt f Now, I don't know if you heard the click, but that brake just energized. So we're good to go. So now we want to start the MSP software. Here I have it right here. Okay, here it is. All right. Clear path servos can be tuned to provide excellent performance on a wide variety of mechanical systems. From our factory, the motor has been tuned to run standalone with no mechanics connected. After you've connected the motor, to your mechanical system, run the auto tuner to optimize all settings. And right now, it's already checked. Auto tune the motor and connected mechanical system. This tunes the motor to the mechanics and optimizes performance. So let's press next. Warning, clear path motors generate a substantial amount of power for their size. Do not continue with this process unless you are qualified to evaluate whether your mechanics are built and sized properly and have done so. Improperly used or upon malfunction, clear path can cause significant damage, personal injury, or death. Be sure to stay completely clear of clear path on all mechanics while clear path has power applied, whether it's enabled or disabled. Wear safety glasses and other safety gear as appropriate and take all appropriate safety precautions for your circumstances. So we have to press, I have read and understood this important safety warning. Now we can click next. This motor has a peak torque capability of 1,613 ounce inch or 11.39 Newton meters. If any mechanical component connected to this motor is not rated for this much torque, reduce the torque limit to an appropriate percentage. Torque limit, 100%. Uh, we went over this earlier that ClearPath recommends running it at 100% for the tuning. If for some reason you've got too big a motor on your machine and you run to want to want or need it to run at less torque, you need to change this. We're going to run it at 100%. Tuning stimuli, restrained or dynamic. We're going to use dynamic. Restrained says use a softer tuning stimuli, but results may not be ideal. Dynamic recommended best results but uses more aggressive stimuli. Let's hit next. And then it says just before the end of the tuning process, the auto tuner will make some relatively fast moves. If your mechanical system has speed limitations, you can enter a maximum motor velocity here. You will get best results by using a velocity as close as possible to the default setting. I'm going to go ahead and use the default setting. Click next. Does the connected mechanical system limit the motor shaft rotation to a fixed number of revolutions? Example, a lead screw, or does it allow unlimited rotation? Example, a fan blade. We have limited rotation. We have stops. We have hard stops on the bottom of the top, so it's limited rotation. Unlimited rotation would have been the little, the little A axis. There's no stops in it. So we're going to run with limited rotation. Show clear path where it is free to perform auto tuning. Ideally, you should show clear path the entire range of possible motion, but clear path must have at least 45 shaft degrees of free range to properly operate. Choose how you want to move the mechanics to indicate the range of motion. You, there's two, two choices. I want to move the mechanics by hand, unpowered, means you would roll the axis by hand. We're not going to do that. The other one is, I want to use power to move the mechanics. If the mechanical axis or motor shaft is not easy to move by hand or it cannot be done safely, you can use the untuned motors to move the mechanics. So we're going to go with 
use the power to move the mechanics. We'll click Next. Okay. This is where I mark the travels of the machine so that I can tell the MSP software the range that it can tune the axis. So I mark the, the both extremes, the top of the axis and the end of the axis in the case of the Z axis. Enable the motor by holding down the control key on your keyboard. Releasing the control key will disable the motor. Click the clockwise or counterclockwise buttons to drive the axis to both ends of its stroke or at least until the bar graph turns yellow. If the motor is moving too slowly, increase the maximum speed, setting a little at a time. So we're going to hit control and now we don't know which way to go. We're going to go clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, I'm going to try clockwise move and see. Okay, I don't think that's the right way. So let's try the other way. Yeah, that's the other way. Okay, so we need to go clock counterclockwise to go up. I'm going to go back. Now I'm going to hit next. And I'm going to restart. Okay, now I'm going to hold control. And you'll see the motor is enabled. Now I'm going to do clockwise move. And there you can see the z-axis moving up. I'm going to hold this until I see it get to its top of its axis. I just put little sharpie marks on the sheet metal so that I could see when it got to the top and the bottom. Got about two inches left to go. Okay, there we go. And then you look at my bar graph here. It's green. We got past the minimum revs. We're at 50 plus revs. All right. So at this point, all we do is we click Next. We don't want to drop the axis at all. Now it knows its range. I'm going to move this screen a little bit down so you can see what's going on up here. Okay, so we're going to click Next. And it says, it's a review. Peak torque allowed, 100%. Rotation distance limited, yes. We can only can go so far. Rotation direction limited. No bidirectional. Auto tune range defined 50.7 revolutions. So now we're going to go click next. And it says, what happens next? The clear path auto tuner explores all boundaries of your system's dynamics in order to create a high performance and stable tuning file. To do so, the motor will make a sequence of moves. Some will be abrupt and forceful and some may generate significant noise, whining and buzzing. The following behavior is normal. High pitch squeals, low pitch grunts, fast abrupt moves that will ring, slow uneven looking moves, buzzing, pauses of unequal length up to 20 seconds, short moves and long moves up to 90% of the auto tune area you have set. Clear path auto tuning is comprehensive process. Full refinement take, typically takes 10 to 15 minutes. Systems with mechanical resonances may take up to 30 minutes. You can stop the auto-tuning process at any time by pressing the escape key on your keyboard or by clicking the red escape button in the next page. Let's go to the next page. Okay, click run to begin the auto-tuning process. Pause allows you to stop motion and then continue where you left off. 
To stop the auto-tuning process and disable, click the red Escape button or press the Escape key on your keyboard. Clicking Next will then bring you to the first step of the wizard. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. I'll let you listen to some of it and see what it's doing. I don't want to do a full 15 minutes of you watching this thing go up and down, but just to give you an idea, and at the end of the process, we'll come back. Here we go. You can see right here in the RMS Max, 19%. You can see position counts. See velocity RPM. You see, you, you can't visually see the changes, but you can watch them here. And then watch the exceptions box. Looking at the uh, coupler, it is turning ever so slightly, and you can hear the clicks. All this is very normal. You can see up here in exceptions is voltage saturation. That's normal. You can see the auto-tune progress right here. It's at 6%. Sounds pretty violent, but it's normal. There you can see the z-axis is going in the negative direction. We're at 8% on the auto-tune progress. This is why it was important for me to remove that gas strut. The gas strut still had some charge in it and it would have affected the auto-tune process. So it was removed before we ran it. Okay, let's go back through these notes while it's running. Before you start the auto-tuning process, move the motor to one end of the travel. When you get to the screen after set tune area, move the motor away from the home position until the bar turns green. Leave the motor there. You have just defined the stroke for tuning. The auto tuner will move from this location back towards the location during tuning. That's what it's doing now. We've already done this. An easy tune will take 7 to 10 minutes. A moderate tune will take 12 to 16 minutes. And a difficult tune with high inertia mismatch and or vibrations can take 20 to 30 minutes. If tuning is not complete after 40 minutes, there's possibly excessive vibration, slipping mechanics, or some springy compliance. After the auto-tune is complete, you'll need to put each motor into the proper operational mode. For CNC machines, this is usually step and direction mode with an SD motor. The modes do not get selected by default at the end of the tuning session and must be manually set by the user. Set the RAS to 16 milliseconds for both the RLN and ELN motors. After you've made the changes to MSP, save each Axis motor config file to a specific name that will make sense to you two years from now. For example, SILE 4 X SDSK 3411 S-RLN uh, V1. Machine Axis motor family motor size and winding encoder option version. Saving a name of the X axis will not be very useful if you made changes. Always save the file to a new name after changes have been made. After auto-tuning, start out moving at slow speed and a short distance to make sure all the settings between Acorn and ClearPath are correct. We're about 38% into this. I will bring you guys back uh, when the auto-tune is complete on the Z. It's about 95% now.
hundred percent it's finished now so now we click next clear path must be disabled prior to finishing auto tuning if you want to move the motor to a different spot before disabling for example to move, move a vertical load to the bottom of its stroke so it doesn't fall use the jog buttons below before pressing disable let's go ahead and drop it I'm going to change the RPM setting here so I can move it a little bit faster. And I'm going to drop it down to towards the bottom end of its travel. It's going to drop, but at least it won't be violent. Okay. Now we'll disable. And we'll click Next. While running, ClearPath can be a manual can be manually fine-tuned a moderate amount to suit your preferences for audible noise versus shaft stiffness disturbance rejection. Open the fine-tuning dialog under Setup Tuning menu if you want to make fine adjustments to the tuning. Um, I don't hear any buzzing on mine, so I'm probably going to leave it alone. We'll take a look at it. Motor identity. You can change the motor identity settings at any time by opening the motor ID dialog under the edit menu. Click the checkbox below to change the motor identity settings when the auto tune wizard finishes. I'm going to click I want to change the motor's identity settings. Click finish. And then here's the motor name, so we're going to go here and I'm going to I'm going to take everything out because there's only so many characters you can put in this line so I'm going to put uh, sile sile x4 z and then a dash oops x4 z and a dash and then z axis and let's just put the date in there 210316. And then uh, verify tuning upon connection. By default, USB connection ClearPath MSP will remind you to start the auto tuning process if the mechanics have changed since the motor was last tuned. To prevent this reminder from appearing for the serial number motor, check the box below. I'm not going to check it. Click OK. OK. Um, Okay, I'm checking to make sure we're in step and direction and we are, I'm on mode here. And then uh, setup tuning, there's fine tuning. If we wanted to do the fine tuning, I'm gonna leave it alone because I don't hear any noise from that motor. And then profile conversion, RAS 16 milliseconds. So we're gonna leave it that way to 16 millisecond. All right, that should take care of it. Should now have to save it. And I'm going to put it in uh, documents. And we'll go ahead, let's go ahead and save it to uh, Sile X4Z Axis CPM dash s d s k dash three four thirty two s dash r l n dash v one and i'm going to put the date in there twenty one o three sixteen and we're going to save it okay it's saved mode we're in step and direction, so we should be good to go. So I'm going to close it. Now we got to reverse this stuff here. So I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to do a Control-Alt-F on Output 8, and I have to hit it again. Uh, a lot of people do this override, but I'm moving this box so you can see there's still an underline under there. That means you turn the output off. Make sure there's no underline, so hit it again, Control-Alt-F. Now I move away from it. It's, in, it's turned off, and there's no line under it. Now we want to go to input one, control alt F, control alt F. 
Okay, so it's back to normal. Now I'm going to do a shutdown of CNC 12. Exit. I'm going to come back around here and I'm going to power down the control. I'm going to disconnect my USB cable. I'm going to reconnect my signal cable to the motor. Now I'm going to power the control back up. Control is coming back up. You've got to wait for that heartbeat. Okay, heartbeat's up. Now let's see if we get CNC 12 back up. Get our machine moving. Okay, I'm going to reset, recycle the e-stop. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just gently jog my z-axis. Okay, it's going up. Let's get it closer to home and then we'll home the machine. Okay, let's home the machine. Okay, CNC 12 is online. That's going to conclude this video. Um, I hope you found it interesting. So we installed that brake on the, on the uh, Z axis. We configured CNC 12 to uh, command to control the brake. And then we did a, uh, we used the Technic MSP software to tune the Z axis. I hope you got a lot out of it. For me, the challenge was overriding uh, CNC 12 and manually making sure that that motor, that the clear path motor had motor power so we could run the tune. All right, guys, until next time, we'll talk to you soon.